So if you want to uh, get a new Linux laptop, I've got some really good news for you. Because if you have looked at the competition between the PC market and Mac, it's not been good for PC. Like, I, I love PCs. And I've been building them and servicing them and, you know, drooling over them for decades. But Mac has stomped PC into the ground with their latest laptops. It's just a fact. Like, you could say all the things, you can't repair Mac, all that's true. I'm just talking about pure price to value you get. For somehow, some reason, Apple has stomped PC in value for what you get. And that is... That Which is really is hard crazy. to come out of my mouth. It's crazy um, because it used to be not not only just like it, it, it used to be a joke. They're like, yes, you you are getting a Mac because it has certain things that you need, but you're also compromising on power. You're compromising on battery. You're going to pay way more than it's yes. worth. And you're going to pay a ridiculous amount of money. And now we're in a situation where the market has increased their prices for competitiveness of Apple, but not increasing their actual value of the laptops. Sure, some of them are really good, but they don't really win. In, like if they win in power, they lose in battery life. If they win in battery life, they lose in power. And it, that's- Or resolution. It, or they have terrible tiny screens. screens. Yes, they could also have really, really, really tiny screens for no reason at all. But it's, it's funny because we're in a situation where these two- uh, options have just completely flipped and now we're ARM. we're and, and it's because of like apple going to arm and that sort of thing and ryan you said that there is going to be a, a potential game changer here let us know what is actually happening here's the thing are we really, should we be excited for this you should be super excited There's and you should be excited box. about the company as well because oh, really? it's tuxedo oh. who's leading this charge I'm liking really? this company more and more. Like, I want to get a hold of a tuxedo. Tuxedo, I know you're listening. Like, yeah, you can send me one. Them. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Um, there's a tuxedo prototype laptop powered by the Snapdragon X Elite 12-core ARM processor that was at the latest Computex 2024. And man, they were so much launched at Computex. Yeah. And I, I skimmed one. through it, and I could care less about any of it. This is... The most important thing that came out of Computex in my mind uh, and really happy to see Tuxedo's name uh, wrapped around it as well. So the prototype is built on a premium all aluminum body. All right. We're starting out. Good That's start. what we're talking yep. about. Got to have that all aluminum frame all and right, a weight right. of just 1.36 kilograms. So it's lightweight. You're not carrying around a four pound laptop and an equivalent to a two and a half pound MacBook. Um, it's 14 inch display features a 2560 by 1600 resolution. Okay. So we got a 2k. Nice. So yeah. for all the Linux computer manufacturers out there besides tuxedo, that's 2k. That's the next gen stuff from 10 years ago that we should already be on. Yeah. 4k, <laughs> 8k is already out. You're all still on 1920 by 1080. Nobody knows why. Nobody knows why, but Nobody. also uh, <laughs> real, real quick, let's talk about this particular because we brought it up and it's a very important point. And we, I talked about it recently on Twill because there are some new laptops that came out, and one of them was 1080p. Of course, and it was Linux uh, based company, right? It, it was a Linux course, based company. Yeah, because yes. that's how we, yeah, unfortunately. Um, but I had a couple comments that I want to run by you as the uh, resident hardware addict on the show. Mm -hmm. It's actually kind of funny because I said some stuff on the show about hardware and they were like, you don't know about hardware. And I was like, yeah, that's true. But Ryan does. So let's do yeah. this. All right. Bring it. So one of the comments. So they, they said that 1080p is better for battery life and that's why they want it. So that's probably true. But my question is, um, well, because it's, it's less powerful hardware. My question is, if you have a higher quality screen that is 2k by default if you lower it to 1080p do you still benefit from that setting no but you could have a 2k and 4k panel right that you're running like an oled that is going to require a lot less power than a traditional panel that's 1920 by 1080 but this battery problem somehow isn't a problem for mac somehow mac runs 2k retina has the longest battery life of any laptop i've ever used period so explain that to me so 
what you're saying is true, but it's because of the inefficiency of all the other components in there on that PC. And it's not an excuse in my mind to basically say, well, I, I want to go with this really dull resolution because it saves my battery life when the competitor doesn't have to do that. And by the way, Mac's been on 2K even when they were back in Intel. Uh, so somehow they were able to have good battery life then. Not, of course, what they're doing now. with Not as much now, but they still had pretty good. Yeah. And, and so, you know, when Intel released their new Ultra line and things like that, I think you're finally going to see PC capable of potentially, by mimicking the big little architecture, the capability of turning down some of these other components so that your battery isn't being absorbed by them because your PC is not running at full power with everything all the time, which is really stupid. And that's how PCs have been made for a really long time. Uh, whereas Mac came in and said, hey, you know, there's no reason if the processor can go to three gigahertz to constantly run it at three gigahertz 24 seven when you're just opening notepad. So like this is something that everyone should have thought of and we hadn't. So it's interesting point, but it doesn't it doesn't solve the problem. 1920 by 1080 saves some battery. Uh, you're still your 1920 by 1080 laptop. It's max battery life is still half of what a MacBook can get with the 2K resolution. So right, there you okay, go. there is that yeah. point too. But also the quality of the, the the issue of 1080p now is right is the quality of the hardware is like kind of cheaped out on right. Not necessarily right. that we're talking, but not not I'm not saying that the laptop we I just talked about on Twill is that problem. But the typical reason that they do it is because it is the baseline now so that they're able to any company that ships a 1080p is able to save a lot of money because it is baseline. It's like why we had 1366 by 768 for years and everybody was like, well, it's totally fine. Well, if it's totally fine, why do we not still have them? Well, Cubicle Nate is a perfect example of somebody, if you check our forums, who was always against us when we would talk me specifically when I talk about being anti 1920 by 1080 and uh, on the forums, he apologized to me because he started having all kinds of issues uh, connecting to the various terminals and other things when he had two or more open based on the 1920 by 1080 and saying, Hey, you were right the whole time. This really isn't a good resolution to be using anymore. And so like, I think most people who do some research will kind of understand that this is not a defendable position anymore. Like 1920 by 1080 is not a good resolution. Um, if you're getting a fantastic value for a laptop, you're getting a four or $500 laptop, by all means, is it usable? A hundred percent. It's not, gar but, but the problem is these companies releasing stuff for Linux love to cheap out on the screen at 1920 by 1080 and charge the same prices or more as the manufacturers who are putting 2K and 4K screens in there. So that's the problem. It's not, if you're running a 1920 by 1080, good. Like if you got that computer for a good price, you had it for 10 years, they're perfectly usable. But we're talking about new machines coming out great there point. and impressing the market. So that's it's a great um, point because especially yeah. the fact that it's a thousand dollars or more and you're still getting 1080p, it's like, we're okay for the Linux companies that are doing that. We are okay and a lot of people are okay with paying a premium to Linux companies to support Linux to support that effort. But if we're paying a premium, shouldn't we get premium quality stuff? Yeah. There's also a difference in architecture. RISC, which is ARM, ARM is based off a RISC processor, which is much more efficient. And that's one of the reasons why companies are moving to ARM is be, because it is more efficient with the battery and the timings and whatnot with the processor and the, the GPU. Um, whereas the traditional Intel processor being CISC, it, it, it's not as efficient. And so there is more, um, you know, higher TDP and, and whatnot. And I know that has a lot to do with what's going on with well, the I'm battery I'm very light. excited going back to the tuxedo, but I'm also very excited about Intel and their new ultra line. Cause it looks like they're all learning some really valuable things, but focusing on tuxedo here, Snapdragon X elite 12 core arm processor, 2560 by 1600 resolution, 400 nit maximum brightness, which is very good. And a hundred percent sRGB coverage, which is super important for people like Michael, for me, uh, all my drawings are crap, so who cares? <laughs> uh, but for people like Michael and, and Jill. No, and you have very yeah. good use of um, ab abstract white space. There you go. That's <laughs> the 
Jill's compliment. You have compliment the use of negative right. space. That's Thanks, it. Jill. That's what it was. Negative That's space. what it was. <laughs> Uh, you get the 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory and you get storage in the M2 2280 Gen 4 slot there as well and a 50 watt hour battery and USB 4, HDMI, all of the goodies basically. At the end of the day, it's a prototype so we don't know what the final version is going to look like but that prototype sounds like the bomb.com. Yes, I'm old. <laughs> yes, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I was about I was about to say that that phrase is not yeah. at all. I'm talking the to the kiddos, Michael. I'm really trying to get the kiddos in on the technology. Hello here. there, fellow kids. <laughs> <laughs> so this is huge because up to this point, we've been hearing about ARM-based processors coming to PC, but it's all been around Windows. Yeah. And Tuxedo and Snapdragon partnering up here to bring this to Linux. This is freaking huge. This yeah. is huge for us. And I'm Wonderful. so excited to get my hands on this. Well, you know, when actually when Linux kernel 6.9 was released just this last May, it had better support for ARM processors, including ARM64 Rust code support. And I, I wanted to read a quote that Linus had to say. And I now have a more powerful ARM64 machine, thanks to Ampere. So the last week, I've been doing almost as many ARM64 builds as I have x86-64. And that should obviously continue during the upcoming merge window, too. So Linus has a more powerful ARM64-based machine now to build kernels on. And this goes a long way for Qualcomm. Yes, Qualcomm is upping their support of the latest Snapdragon X Elite in the mainline Linux kernel. So, you know, you ha you're having Linus using these machines and Qualcomm's like, uh, I better, s we better start making our, <laughs> our hardware compatible of Linux, especially in the world of, you know, the server world and, you know, Linux. It could have been Linus or it could have been me. They heard, you know, it could have <laughs> been like, oh my God, we need to do this for Ryan. You know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Actually, Ryan maybe, and Jill and maybe, Michael. Yeah. so maybe it is like uh, indirectly, like maybe Qualcomm is doing it because Linus is using ARM, but yeah. maybe Linus is using ARM because he heard us talk about it on this show. That's you know? it. Yeah. That's it. Man, it's one big circle. The circle of life. Right circle there. of life. The circle of Linux. <laughs> So I'm yeah. I'm excited to play with this uh, this new tuxedo laptop. Yeah. But so even exciting. if you want to send us a prototype, we're good with that. Yeah, I'll you know, totally rock a would, prototype. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Michael, uh, to your question about you getting yelled at about the 1920 by 1080. Let's say you had a 2K screen or 4K screen. What could I do if I still like 1920 by 1080? Is there any workaround, like software wise, um, I could do? Well, you could lower the resolution down to 1080p if you want. Oh, to. You could just so you change mean, your display resolution. Oh, wow, huh? So well, that doesn't that doesn't <laughs> solve the battery, like you said, but it does solve no. yeah. for people who have issues of it not <laughs> being big enough, or for example, some or scaling maybe. You're some scaling? some desktop environments don't have very good fractional scaling. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, they're not. I'm not going to name them. <clears throat> no, but there are other. DEs that do have fractional scaling pretty well, and I wouldn't name those either because that would be just you know rude or KDE. And but to mate, yes, sure. <laughs> but I mean that doesn't help my joke. But yes, I know. Um, <laughs> but yes, there are some fractional scalings. There's a lot of effort being done into those. Um, and GNOME is a little bit weir weird because you have to do some extra effort to turn it on, and it's not just a toggle, and uh, that's annoying. Unless you're using Ubuntu, they actually put in effort for that, so that's good. Um, so there are some distros that do put in the effort to make fractional scaling work. So it depends on what you're doing, what configuration you have, but you also can just lower the resolution and just have the 1080p output anyway. You know. By the way, for yeah. those who like 1920 by 1080 and want a good price, there's a Vivo book from Asus that's really good price, uses the Intel Ultra processors in there, and it's 1920 by 1080, but it's on an OLED screen. And let me tell you, oh. it's a beautiful panel. And it's beautiful at 1920 by 1080. So if you put a really high quality screen in there, it's yeah. still a way to save money by making it 1920 by 1080 and not 2K. Because <laughs> that, that same laptop, by the way, comes with an NVIDIA GPU in it. So it's not like it couldn't run 2K. Uh, mm. Not capable of it. But they're doing that for um, probably efficiency capability. Because OLED's not going to turn on all of the pixels at once, like light up everything like you know, the other panels traditionally do. Like IPS yeah. do, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, that's what OLED. makes it more... 
power does efficient a good job with that. in there. So that's like there's some alternatives to if if for whatever reason we're always going to be in Linux stuck on 1920 by 1080 <laughs> uh, that you could put a better OLED screen in there and still make it pretty nice and have very vibrant bright coloring. But know, also to be, just yeah. to be clear because the reason why we we are annoyed by 1080p at this point isn't to do with the um, the resolution itself. It's the fact that majority of the time when an, a, a 1080p screen is used, it is used as a way to kind of like pretend to be HD with the full HD cl uh, classification. And then also it's usually not a great type of monitor. Like the fact that you can get, yeah, you can get, a t you can get laptops that have 1080p TN monitors in like these days that are still res like not really not like not ridiculously priced but still not well priced and that makes no sense because tn is rarely even done anymore so like that's the kind of issue that we have it's not the resolution it's just like it's it's a, a way to seem in a marketing sense that you're having a high quality Full HD. I think it's the resolution but. too. For me personally, and this is what Nate found, when you're more working on multiple things at a time, that 1920 by 1080 is extraordinarily limited compared to the 2K. I, personally, yeah. I agree that 1080p yeah. is not a great resolution for uses. I mean, I have 4K monitor. So obviously, actually I have two yeah. 4K monitors because one was not enough. But <laughs> I do think that it's not necessarily that the resolution is terrible for everybody. Every use case is different. So if you have some gamers like 1920 yeah. by 1080, because uh, apparently it gives them some advantage in first person shooters to be zoomed in more or something like that. Well, there's also the resolution, the re refresh rate is more consistent in a lower, you have a lower powered machine. Yeah. Maybe too. But also yeah. like, but even then that's not optimal because you'd want to have more screen real estate to see everything. So that has that, that recommended. No, what, what that recommendation has now become <laughs> 1440p because it's still not technically a 2k monitor so it doesn't have the extra stuff it's on the it's like the highest level you can get while still having the same support 1440 has. from some yeah. of these companies i yeah. would too i think yeah. that if you are going to try to optimize for battery life but still want to have something that does not count as baseline 1440 is totally fine or OLED panels. Yeah, 1920 is also horrible for accessibility software, especially zooming software. Mm. <laughs> Boom. You just, you Jill don't... just dropped the bomb on all yeah, y'all. You know, you just it's shut horrible. your mouth now. Oh, you're, about, <laughs> right, you're in the middle of your email about to tell us, oh no, I like 1920, my 1080, y'all stupid. And then Jill said that and it's like, <laughs> oh crap, I better delete that. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> shut it. <laughs> we win. 